Jesus and please be comfortably seated in the name of Jesus Christ praise God as we continue in this awesome pre Shiloh one night with the king it is time for us to present our expectations before the king whatever be your heart's desire please it's time for you to go ahead and express it before the Lord and the king shall answer you speedily in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise to your feet right now and go before the king with your expectations. Go ahead. Let God hear your voice and he shall answer you speedily in Jesus' name. Please lift up your voice before the king right now. Let the king hear your voice tonight.
power your expectation in the spirit pray in the holy ghost the king has heard uh, your expectation tonight go ahead and give him thanks uh, we're gonna give him thanks and praise and appreciate him glorify the lord uh, he has heard you and he has answered you give him the glory and praise father we give you glory and praise blessed be your name forever we appreciate you father we glorify your name we thank you blessed be your name of god for in jesus mighty name that we have prayed all your prayers have been heard and answered in the name of jesus christ praise god take us further tonight bringing the second word unto us today is our first vice president bishop david abiria put your hands together for jesus as a welcome him to give us a second word thank you jesus Will a true lover of Jesus give him a very big hand tonight and a big sh shout of praise? Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight, God will do great things in your life. Celebration precedes celebration. I mean, celebration precedes manifestation. Joel chapter 2, verse 21. Fear ye not, O land. Rejoice and be glad. For the Lord will do great things. Somebody celebrate Jesus tonight. Rejoice in him. Your king is here. Your king is here. Your king is here. Thank you, mighty father. In Jesus' wonderful name. If you can lift up your hand one more time, Heavenly Father, we give you glory tonight for bringing us into your presence, to your palace, to be lavished with your favor. We stand here tonight before you with hope, with expectation, and with faith. And we know that no one standing here before you tonight will return from here empty. For when ye go, you shall not go empty tonight no one will leave here this morning empty everyone shall leave here down this morning fully loaded thank you for doing it lord even as we receive your word right now and all the saints of god full of expectation for baptism of favor say very loud amen please give God your big hand and have your seat and tell your neighbors you will soon hear my testimonies of favor tell one more person as you have said it it shall be so for you tonight in this pre Shilom, one night with the king I count it a great privilege given by God's servant to bring to us his word and I do believe that as his word comes it will pave way for your favor you know everything God does is via his word God's word is God's passage wherever the word goes it creates a passage for God to pass and tonight as you hear this word it will lead to your own favor The word I'll be privileged to bring to you this night is captioned, Vital Keys to Walking in Favor. Favor, like we were told by God's servant a little while ago, is our heritage. We have to be walking in it. Favor is not supposed to be an occasional occurrence in our lives but a daily experience. For he daily loaded us with benefits, daily, not monthly, not weekly, not annually, daily. He said, give us this day our daily bread. 
we are meant for daily favor. Say, I receive it. You are cheating yourself waiting for monthly salary. Salary is what you live for. Blessing is what you are favored with. There are two different things. The one you labor for who is supposed to pay your salary may run away. In our system today, you have many employers who run away. But God who gives favor does not go and leave. He's there with you always. From henceforth, you will be enjoying a walk in favor. But please note, God's kingdom operates essentially on keys. Keys. Not gifts. Keys. Gifts are endowments, but keys are for your possession. Gifts may fade, but keys are constant. A few may have gifts, but all can have gifts. I mean, keys. You can have the key, what it takes. And you know, when you have key, you can put your hand in your pocket. When you have key, you don't cry. When you have key, you are in command. So we are talking about what puts you in command of favor. And for your information, you don't beg for favor. Favor translates you from being a beggar to a controller. It puts you in charge. So tonight, get ready. We have received certain keys from God's servant earlier. And now we'll be taking just two additional keys that will put you in charge. Favored people don't beg. They don't beg. Yeah, they don't lack. The children of Israel did not beg before they left Egypt. They commanded favor when they knew what to do. Matthew 6, 18. What Jesus said he will give to us is keys. I give to you the keys of the kingdom. 16, 18. I give to you the keys of the kingdom. Whosoever takes the key away from you has robbed you of your destiny. Luke eleven fifty two. Once you have the key, your case is settled. And key connotes knowledge. And knowledge produces understanding. And understanding secures favor. Proverbs 13, 15. But understanding doesn't jump on us. We have to learn to understand. We have to learn. The pathway to favor, therefore, is learning how to possess what it takes to get it done. Keys are to be applied. Ways are to be followed. Moses knew the ways of God. He commanded the favor of God. You will be in command of favor when you know the ways to getting it done. Number one is undying passion for the kingdom of God. Undying passion. That is waking up in the morning, thanking God. In the afternoon, you are thanking God and his kingdom. Undying passion for the things of the kingdom of God. There are members of the kingdom of God and there are servants in the kingdom of God. He called us to be members, but he wants us to graduate to be servants or workers in the kingdom. There are those who are liabilities to the kingdom and there are those who carry the responsibilities of the kingdom by serving God the king who owns the kingdom and when you serve the king you are entitled to the favor from the king that's why it says seek you first the kingdom of God and you have nothing to seek second 
because all the things you will have needed to seek a second shall be added to you addiction to God makes you enjoy additions from God seek ye first the kingdom of God and you have nothing to seek second those who seek his kingdom don't have something to seek a second because before they think of seeking for a second thing it's already added to them from this day you'll be operating in the realms of additions Additions here is what we call favor. What we call favor. As you are taking care of his kingdom, he's taking care of you. Supplying all that you need. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Passion here means to have undying love for God. To be zealous in serving God. To be emotionally in love with God. You see, the Bible says we should not love just in words, but in deed and in truth. So you have words, you have deeds, which is action, and you have truth, which is your sincerity, your genuineness of heart. God wants to see our action, not just our words. I love God. That's good. But you need to show that you love him. You need to prove that you love him. And the way to prove your love to God is by your passion. Your passion. And please listen to this. You don't define passion. You reflect passion. When you see it on a man, you don't have to tell it. It shows. Passion is not to be described. Passion is to be manifested, is to be demonstrated. If you love him, you don't talk much about it, you show it. If you love your wife, you don't talk much about it, you show it. You show it to her and she knows it. Action is the language of love. Action is the language of love. Action. Passion for the kingdom of God means to be restless in pursuit of the things of the kingdom. When it is time to win souls, you are there. When it is time to pray for the kingdom, you are not silent. You are loud enough. Everybody knows, everybody can see the reflection that you are not faking it, but you are truly demonstrating it. I pray tonight that you will get a fresh baptism of passion for God. <laughs> Psalm 102, verses 13 to 15. Thou shall arise without being begged and have mercy upon Zion because Zion has walked to a point and a time to favor her. Yea, the said time is coming. When you serve God to your set time, because everything comes by a set time, God measures what we do. When it is set, then he is set. When you serve him to a point to move him into action. See, don't beg for God to bless you. Serve him to a point where he will rise. He will arise. And say, I have seen you. I'm re not ready to work for you. The time to favor her has come. For thy servants, take pleasure or show passion towards the stones and favor the dust thereof. That is everything that has to do with the kingdom touches him. It touches him. It touches him. Does the kingdom the kingdom of God touch you at all if it doesn't touch you God will not touch you and as a result look at the kind of mercy and favor so the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the heart thy glory when you show him passion he shows you his favor until your passion is accredited 
your favor will not be certificated. Quick example. Is the undying passion for the kingdom of Nehemiah. Look at that. He was a slave. Just like God's servant told us earlier. He was unprofessional. He had no skill. He was not a tenured star, a domestic star. His assignment was to serve the king wine. He was living daily at the mercy of the king. What was his qualification? Passion. Listen to me. <laughs> if all you know to do is to have passion for God, you have a secure future. I can tell you, I'm an example. I didn't look like a promising child in terms of what skill do you have, what ability do you have. I wasn't, I was so fragile, I couldn't do sports, I couldn't do anything. I I wanted to join some group of boys at school. They disqualified me. I was not a dull student, but I was not an excellent student. I can't remember taking first or second or third position in my life. Now, if I didn't tell you, you will not know. But I'm going down this line for you to know that the basic thing you need is just love God. One thing I knew growing up is that I was everywhere. I wanted to serve God. I was everywhere. I wanted, I joined choir. I joined children teachers. I joined sanctuary. I was privileged to be first technical officer of God's servant, recording his messages. I just loved God. I had passion. I was a soul winner, a diehard soul winner. One year after I got saved, I started going for evangelism. I didn't know what to say. I went with some group of people. Because we go in those days two by two. I was listening to the person preaching and I was cramming everything he said. So I told him, when we leave this place, I'll be the one to preach the next place. We got there, I was fully ready. But within one minute, the message was over. All the same, I succeeded in preaching my first soul winning message. I just had passion for God. You can't have passion for God and not have a passage in life. So Nehemiah's qualification was passion for God. Passion for God. And it was an undying one. He couldn't stand the news of the walls of Jerusalem being pulled down. Nehemiah chapter 1 verses 1 to 4. When he had the news that Jerusalem's walls were pulled down and people were held captive, he began to weep uncontrollably. He was touched and mourned and fasted and prayed before God. When last did you fast and pray for souls to be saved? You need to ask yourself the question. You fast for business, you fast for money, but when did you, when were you bothered about the growth of the church, about the growth of your self center, about the souls that need to be in charge that was what controlled him he wept he mourned he fasted for certain days not to be promoted but for something to happen to take the shame of the kingdom away and that was it the beginning of his promotion was passion i'm getting to chapter 2 from verses 1 to 4 he couldn't hide his passion. I've said this before. Passion is not what you announce. It's what you reflect. He stood before the king. The king knew something happened. How many people know that you are so passionate about the kingdom of God? The king said to him, what's the matter? He said, why won't my face be like this? Because I just heard that the sepulchers of our father lied wasted. The walls were thrown down. The gates are consumed with fire. And look at verse 4. In verse 4, it was reflected. Then the king said unto him, What do you want me to do? What do you want to be done? When he saw the countenance of his face change, he had never seen him that way before. 
and he began to place his request and according to him the king granted him his request according to the hand of God upon him. see when you have passion for God the hand of God come upon you I don't pray for power as much I only pray to love God more you can't love God and miss his power you can't love him and miss his power his power is, res re is reserved for his lovers, for those who have passion towards him. Whether power to heal the sick, or power to have money, or power to have possession. Power is reserved for those who have passion. Someday I was told that a church people in my hometown needed a bus to be conveying them i said to them i said it's not in my budget they should allow me time and i said anyway let somebody go find out for me how much they sell bus and when they got there how much do you sell this bus the first question the person asked is who needs it and they mentioned my name if he's the one is free he's free i've never met the person before never seen his face before I had passion I don't want these people to suffer I want them to be going to church majestically if he is the one see many of us think we need money to serve God why not but the first thing you need is passion for his kingdom that's how Nehemiah jumped up he was elevated from being a local staff to a governor Nehemiah 514 you can see the gap uneducated became a governor you know why many of us are robbed of position in life no passion for God passion for God will create passage for you among men say loud amen yeah. I see a new dimension of favor coming upon someone here yeah. so if it is your desire to be favored the demand is for you to serve to serve what service are you rendering in the kingdom until the king sees your service the king cannot be set to promote you i see somebody's promotion coming shortly in the name of jesus christ did you get key number one now key number two if you hold this in your hand you won't need to beg for anything i have not had reason to beg for anything yet i don't lack anything for those who serve the Lord shall not be in want of any good thing. Any good thing. Psalm 34 verse 10. Any good thing. Good things comes the way of those who have passion for his kingdom. Someday I went for soul winning. And somebody, not a church member, traveled all the way from Lagos looking for me. They said, where is he? He's gone for soul winning. To where? And they located me there down to where I was winning so he said God spoke to me to do what to give you a check I wasn't looking for it some other day I went for so many and somebody not a church member also called me where are you I said I'm just returning from so many how can I see you I said why not and brought it you know some forex for me in thousands just for passion for God passion for God when you increase your passion for God, you increase the level of your favor that you enjoy from Him. Somebody say loud, Amen. Amen. Raise your hand and ask Him to give you fresh baptism of passion. Passion for the kingdom of God. Everything about the kingdom touches you. That's what you name. Now, number two is a lifestyle of praise. Ever praiseful is ever favored. Praise will always command favor from God Psalm 149 verses 1 to 3 quickly let's take it together praise the Lord sing unto the Lord a new song so may I sing the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints let's read verse 2 together with me please Let them 
sing praise his name in the dance let them sing praises unto him with the trembling and harp verse 4 together for the lord take a pleasure in his people he will beautify the meek with salvation he's talking about you there let's take quick examples here number one example is david david graduated from seven times a day praise to all times of the day praise psalm 119 verse 164 seven times will i praise him and when he did it for a while he said seven times is not enough i will bless the lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth psalm 34 verse 1 he praised god to a point that praising god became at the rate of breathing let everything that had breath praise the lord he was he was not just singing he was breathing praise so we're talking of praise as a lifestyle not occasional thing you do lifestyle means something that you have cultured yourself to it has become habitual to you you can't stop doing it it's an addiction to you lifestyle praising him at all times in all situations not minding what is happening but praising him for who he is praise means celebrating god and the integrity of his word judging god faithful at all times i will praise him in his word in his word will i praise him that's what praise is how did david distinguish himself in praise in second chronicles chapter 28 verse 4 he heard what david said he was not qualified his father didn't think he could be placed as a candidate for consideration how be it the lord god of israel chose me he chose me he favored me choosing you is a mark of favor before all the house of my father to make me king over israel forever for he had chosen judah to be the ruler and of the house of judah the house of my father and among my sons among the sons of my father he liked me he liked me to make me king he liked me so he chose me favor means to be liked favor means to be liked he liked me from today god will like you but hear this god is committed to loving everyone unconditionally but he chooses certain individuals to like and what makes the difference he loves you for who you are but he likes you for what you do he likes you for what you do for him and what is it that david was doing for god that makes him to like him he was praising god he was praising god he was praising god you have to do something to be liked david was doing what god likes so he became god's delight he was pleasing god in praise psalm 69 verses 30 and 31 he was pleasing god favor is lavish towards those who please god i will praise the name of god with a song and magnify him with thanksgiving look at verse 31 this also shall please the lord so our praise pleases him and when we please him we become pleasant to him and when we become pleasant to him he favors us he favors us was david without error plenty of error but he was doing what like god i mean what what made god to like him he was pleasing god that's why if you want to enjoy god's favor you must be ever praiseful ever praiseful ever praiseful according to the scriptures we read in psalm 149 in verse 4 he said he will beautify the meek who are humble to praise him with salvation 
he will lavish favor on them and david tells us among other things that he does in verse 3 let them praise him in the dance i discovered that dance is the peak of praise why because it is the open demonstration of our smallness before the big god if you watch it in every society big men don't praise god at worst you see them moving jelenkeli why because they believe that they are big men when it comes to praise don't be a big man when it comes to praise i am a boy of god now generally dance is considered to be for the mean for the low class people that's why when david danced the wife said ah, oh king why did you become so mean second samuel chapter 6 verse 20 why did you, you know what, what's happening to you you forgot your position you forgot you are a king you're supposed to be moving royally the crown on your head shouldn't fall your dress shouldn't touch the ground then david returned to bless his household and michael the daughter of saul came out to meet him verse 20 remaining verse 20 and said how glorious was the king of israel today he was she was mocking him who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids can you see that of his servant he went so low he was dancing with all the handmaids who should be dancing and he was dancing as one of the vain fellow one of verse 20 again one of the vain fellow he was reduced in our eye as vain shamelessly uncovered himself you have to praise god unshamedly i'm not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ i'm not shameful of what is working in god's the word of god's servant, it is shameful i mean it is it is <laughs> please permit me <laughs> it is foolishness to be shameful of what is gainful amen i thought you would clap for me <laughs> amen i'm not ashamed because he's working and he had the response of david in verse 21 david said you haven't seen anything yet too. and david said unto micah it was before the lord we chose me before your father your father wasn't dancing that's why god removed him and put me there and before all this house to appoint me ruler over the people of the david was saying this is the reason why he made me ruler over israel therefore <laughs> i will still play before him and i could imagine david shaking his body and david said unto michael now that verse 22 he was shaking his body praising god again and i will yet be more vile than this you haven't seen anything yet you will see better dance now and will be based in my own side in my own so that's why he said he blesses the meek you have to make yourself meek and of the hands made, made servant which thou hast spoken of of them shall i be had in honor micah said this is this honor david said as i do this i will get more honor i will get more favored i see somebody's level of favor changing tonight so get ready to praise him david praised god with all his might second samuel chapter 6 verse 14 he praised god with all of his might that he didn't reserve his energy he was releasing his energy and god was releasing his favor he was releasing his energy in praising god and god was re releasing his bags of favor upon her second example is esther who appeared before the king in esther chapter 5 verses 1 to 3 she appeared before the king with royal apparel that's why we are told to come with our royal apparel to come with our best now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel. Remember? It says for us to put on the garment of praise and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house and the king sat up 
upon his royal throne in the royal house and against the gates of the house she appeared before the king in her royal apparel and as she did she obtained favor you have to do something to be liked to obtain favor in the sight of the king and the king said now that you have appeared this way what is your request there are those who make requests from the king and there are those that the king make requests from of what he should do for them in prayer we labor in praise we obtain favor we obtain favor we obtain favor as she was praising god i mean praising the king with a royal apparel open ticket was given to her what do you want what do you want and esther upon expressing what she wants the king said granted granted in praise god releases our grant in praise he releases our inheritance psalm 46 47 rather from verses 1 all the way to 3 as we are praising him he delivers to us our inheritance he delivers to us our inheritance in packages of favor down this morning as we are praising him you will live here with your package of favor yeah. number three example quickly is as it happened on the day of Herod's birthday Mark chapter 6 verses 21 to verse 23 something strange is here and when a convenient day was come that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his Lord and high captain and chief estate of Galilee it was a gathering of high level people and when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced look at that and pleased so dancing pleases the person before whom you are dancing and them that sat with him and the king said to the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give thee to thee. A lot were lobbying for things, but she was dancing before the king. The king put aside those who are lobbying and put his eye on the one that pleases him. And he swear unto him. Look at that word swear. Praising God brings you into sworn blessing. Into sworn see in prayer we deal on promises in praise we deal on sworn blessings god swore unto abraham on what account as he was making sacrifice he said i and the lord will go and worship we are going to praise god he sworn i will give unto thee unto the half of my kingdom praise gives you unlimited open ticket and check just ask for anything you want in the three cases they went to the peak of praise david dance i believe esther also with her royal appearance must have appeared before the king in a majestic dancing way before the king pointed the scepter to her ask me anything you want so when you get to the realm of praise you get to the realm of favor where anything can just happen you get to realm of favor where you assess blessings in swearing dimension down this morning god will swear a blessing for someone here are you ready to praise him look at what was shown to us by the jewel company tonight however don't praise god because you want people to see you don't praise him with bitterness in your heart praise him freely joyfully excitedly and watch what happens i know someone here this morning we leave this place with sworn blessing for i will give these people favor it was a swearing by the lord i will give them favor they must go with because they want to go to serve me i must favor them watch it this morning your level of favor is changing will you therefore rise to your feet first of all receive grace from the lord the grace for passion 
ask for fresh baptism of passion fresh baptism of passion for undying love for God undying love for God Peter said we have left all to follow you what shall be our reward ha. Jesus said you haven't seen anything for following me I will show you favor in hundredfold somebody pray right now ask for fresh baptism of favor fresh baptism fresh baptism passion for the kingdom of God and now be, be, begin to put on your garment of praise begin to put on the garment of praise speak to yourself I put away every spirit of heaviness I now I put on the garment of praise I put off the spirit of heaviness whatever is making me heavy not making me to praise God I put off the spirit of murmuring I put off the spirit of complaining I put off the spirit of complaining and murmuring and I put on the garment of praise it's time for me to praise God it's time for me to sing it's time for me to shout it's time for me to sing aloud it's time for me to sing a new song it's time for me to dance before the Lord thank you mighty father in Jesus precious name we are prayed now we have had the theory we are going to practicalize it you are going to dance before the Lord and as you do so, the golden scepter shall be pointed to you. And a sworn blessing shall be delivered to you. Let's give Jesus a big hand and keep standing and start dancing as the choir leads us in praise. Peace, kind God. I never see your type this kind God, oh. blessed be your holy name. This kind God, you. I never see your type, I never see your type. This kind of God, oh. Blessed be your holy name. This kind of God. 